Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you're new to my channel, my name is Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel here, I generally feature content that's focused on knitting or spinning. In this episode of the Thread to Men podcast series, we're gonna sit down for a little while and I'm gonna share with you the things I am currently making as well as the things I've just finished making. It is 94 degrees here in Baltimore today and I am wearing <laughs> a lot of wool and so there's going to be a lot of projects in this video because I'm playing catch up. The first is the Radiant Star Cowl. This is a design by Ella Gordon. I'm going to take it off to show you some better up close footage of this. It is a double um, it's not double knit. It is a double layer of Fair Isle colorwork knitting um, that is seamed together on the inside. And if I can find my seam for you, I'll show you. I just simply did a three needle bind off. I knew it would probably never see the light of day. So I did just what was easiest and my preferred kind of bind off method. I think the instructions say to graft and I was planning to kitchener stitch the two rows, but um, after like four stitches in, I was just like, never mind. <laughs> I couldn't really see my stitches, so I just did the three needle bind off because who's gonna know? And the experience was just much more pleasant. So this is really exciting. I've never had such a warm accessory in my life before, so this is really gonna be most useful on days where it is bitter cold in the winter or perhaps when I ride my bicycle or when I roller skate, I hope that these would be, uh, that this would be a nice accessory to wear. Sorry, I'm really distracted by the amount of hair stuck to this, um, which I'm sure I will uh, think about a lot in the future. If you watch my channel, you know I'm always picking cat, dog, or my own hair off of everything, but I digress. This is knit with Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight wool, um, as well as a couple colors mixed in of other similar, similarly constructed yarns, such as Elemental Effects Shetland. It is also a two ply light kind of fingering weight yarn. I mean, it's going to be hard for anyone to make this exact thing because I'm using different brands of wool and I don't know who sells all of these different brands that would make it easy. Maybe you already have some in stash. I don't know. But when it comes to color work knitting, I think the best thing to do is pick your own colors, find things that really speak to you. And I like to create a little paint box like, like crayons, you know, you kind of use the same crayon in different pictures. Um, I use the same colors in different projects. and. The poppy color was just a leftover from another project I had um, been working on. Same with the, a lot of, I think the pink played a pop in a different project I made. So it's nice to have a little paint box of two ply jumper weight yarn. And I, um, I'm celebrating a birthday this week. I'm turning 36, so I'm buying things. Um, but the next thing that I finished and would like to share that I've made is this sweater I'm wearing here. It is a design by Isabel Kramer um, and I knit this with my hand spun. And this is a natural chocolate brown fleece that I purchased I think the last time I went to Rhinebeck. I got really lucky and ran into an Instagrammer who um, was interested in splitting a couple fleeces with me. So we were both able to get two different fleeces kind of for the price of one and just lower the volume that each of us took home. So I was able to make with that half a Cormo cross fleece, a full sweater. Um, and I think I have about a hundred grams left over. So I might be able to make that into some other accessory like a hat. I spun this with my Kromsky wheel. I haven't blocked the sweater yet. I'll block it before I make the project video, but I had cast off this last few stitches on Friday while at work. I sewed in some of the ends yesterday and I still have even, I like to close up the armpit joins um, where you pick up new yarn and I haven't wove those ends in or like cleaned up those kind of holy-ish areas with those ends, but I plan to do that. I plan to block this. Um, so this is unblocked, but 
this sweater um, was something I've been working on for quite a while. I used to try to speed finish my sweaters and try to get things done for videos. But right now I've just been keeping my symbol knitting um, in the car to work on about 15 to 30 minutes a day while on short little breaks at work. Um, and that's all the progress I made on this sweater over a few months. So I've been taking my time with projects. I've cast on new ones. So I feel like I've avoided that slump between projects I can fall into typically when I don't have a new project planned. Um, so I have a few projects planned and I um, will show those to you now. The first is a um, project that I had put on for quite a while. I purchased Michelle Wong's row cardigan pattern months and months and months ago and the yarn that I thought I was planning to make with the, um, utilize in the making of that pattern was a DK weight yarn, um, similar to the worst weight yarn the pattern is written for, but I found that the light color of the heathered gray blend was not the most consistent. It had a bit of a heathered effect and I didn't want the cables to get lost in the heather. So I found a different blend of natural gray fiber from the same mill at Green Mountain Spinnery. They have a new organic Vermont worsted weight yarn and it is a long wool breed of sheep. So it is very sturdy and almost crunchy in its hand. It has a firm shape and I think that that firm, crisp shape is really going to help the cables pop, even though it does still also have a, a slight heathered effect to the color. Um, as you can see, when I hold it back, it looks more solid. And I would say that's more consistent than the lighter gray I was thinking about making this project with. Also, it is a worsted weight, just as the yarn, the pattern was designed in, so, or, or using. So this is the progress I've made on that. It's just um, knit flat in, I think I'm on the back panel right now, and I'm just knitting the ribbing flat. I stopped mid-row, as I typically do. But I really liked the cast-on technique. I think that's one I would personally use in future projects. This is the, I think, 100 gram skein. If you can tell, it's very big and lofty and has lots of air in it. So really enjoying this. It's a heavier weight yarn um, at, compared to what I typically knit with. So I like to always have a lighter weight project on the needles as well because it's just easier on my hands and wrists to manipulate and work with. So I've also cast on a DK weight sweater, which is a pattern I, again, have already owned. It's in fact, one I've made before, but modified um, heavily. I've cast on another Ducat sweater using um, Elsa Wool's Cormo fingering weight. This is the light, I want to say it's the 10% gray color. Um, this is a gorgeous, soft yarn. Um, it has a little bit of a cloud halo um, because of its woolen prep and soft, fine fiber. It has this like little baby sheen to it. And I think coupled with the silk mohair made by Isigar, um, it has a very lovely feel. It is soft like velvet. And I'm thinking of making a pullover, but I might also convert it to a cardigan. I haven't even joined in the round yet. I think I would and then decide to steek the project if I were making a cardigan, but I'm considering modifying this to be a cardigan and perhaps doing something different with the uh, bottom band. Instead of the pattern's instructions, perhaps implementing a cable paddle or um, lace or just a different type of rib. Um, I'm really a fan of the two by two rib, um, so, 
who knows, but um, you know, options are open. And that I spent about an afternoon on, I think last weekend, it was a long weekend, so I had a lot of time to knit and that's kind of exciting. Actually, what's really exciting is <laughs> where this yarn is coming from. You, if you're a long time viewer, you know that I was knitting this combination of yarn before. I was working on these yarns together to knit Andrea Mallory's Daydreamer pullover and I got halfway through. I knew I wanted to frog it, but I didn't know exactly which approach I wanted to take in doing so. And I have something really exciting to show you. I will be right back to go grab it. Give me just a moment. This project turned out to be almost perfect because what I ended up doing is just ripping back to where the project was knit entirely in the round. I had just done a few rows of the front side and I just did a three needle bind off inside out and made a cover for my heating pad. <laughs> if you don't know, I have a form of inflammatory arthritis um, called psoriatic arthritis. It's something that I manage with diet and exercise. And there are times when I eat the wrong thing or I'm under a lot of stress and I have a lot of pain and discomfort originating along my spine or specifically my sacroiliatic joint. Also my hands, my feet, cervical spine, etc. But there are times when I need my heating pad and I had made a linen cover for it because I was sick of looking at the polyester blue that I bought it, that came with what I bought. And the linen was not dense enough to make the heating pad functional, to be honest. So, um, it's hot now, I don't really use my heating pad all that much, but this mohair silk wool cover is the most luxurious heating pad I think on the planet. It doesn't fit it exactly right, it's too long, but because the ribbing was knit separate and then joined, I was able to create on both sides a little slot for the cord to go through. And you can just you know pull it through this hole here, which it kind of looks like an upside down sweater, but this was the bottom. Now it looks like a sweater for my heating pad, but I have a hole on both sides so I can flip it if I need to. Um, this, you know, obviously it's what it is. And I made the best out of a situation I just wanted to get out of. I realized that the, I think I went down a needle size from the patterns instructions and I just didn't like the density of the fabric and the cut of the fabric together. It was too dense for the shape um, because I think that the size I chose or the size needle I chose. So it just wasn't what I anticipated and I was just so tired of working on it. And honestly, I don't think I'm doing the honeycombs exactly right because my honeycombs don't look like honeycombs to me, except for like right here. I don't know, there was just this inconsistency. See, I started out really strong and then it just got strange. So I bailed. Um, I made the best of a frogged moment in knitting history and this is my heating pad now. So I'm super excited for that. Wasn't anticipating it. It feels like a gift now that I'm getting older. You know, I have a great heating pad. <laughs> and, um, Speaking of getting older, I'm just gonna show you some of the things I bought myself to um, do that retail therapy thing, which is of course a very privileged position in life. I bought myself four skeins of Le Petit Lamb's Wool. It's a two-ply jumper weight type yarn um, from Biche and Bush. Here it is. It has a gorgeous tawny brown, like a golden gray, and they were $16.25 per skein. So I walked out of the Knot House yarn shop in Frederick, Maryland with 
just what I need to create the main body of a uh, future color work project. So this will one day be, I hope, a cardigan. I'm obsessed with making cardigans right now because the office I work in is quite chilly and I um, feel like I can get more wear out of a cardigan. Um, also, I just made a pullover, so I need to switch up my wardrobe a little bit. I also have from my stash another skein left over from the Yell cardigan in which I used this base. So I think that that would make a really nice contrast color if I were doing a monochromal, monochromal project, monochromal project, or, um, you know, just another kind of major color. So there's quite a few grams of this. And I also got a little notebook that I thought was pretty decent. I love notebooks with little pockets because I like to sometimes slip my um, ball bands and stuff into that. And I love grid paper. So those were things that I bought over my birthday weekend as well as two skeins of a future project. I created a design. I gave a little sneak peek on my Instagram. So if you want to see what I have coming in the future for you all to knit if you are so inclined, um, I'm re-knitting it to test the pattern and to potentially adjust the shape and not shape, but to adjust the size and the grade, the sizing. There's basically a few different ways you can go about making one design um, multiple sizes and I don't know which approach to take. I already started with one and then I have to conceptualize how I might fit that into a chart to be referential um, for multiple sizes in, in the process of grading that pattern. But then there's an also far more simple mathematical approach that has a different design uh, element uh, to it. So I'm remitting the pattern. I'm using a similar color, one that I love to pop into my wardrobe whenever I can. And this is a cashmere merino nylon superwash yarn that I know is gonna fit very comfortably next to skin. It is a DK weight, which is more comparable to the sport I had designed it in, but I think that making it a DK is gonna give it just a little bit more stretch and a little bit more ease that will be comfortable to wear, but also a little less distorted across tighter areas. So I think that the gauge might change slightly and I'm excited to start swatching. I bought two skeins because I didn't want to run out, um, but I think I might have enough to knit myself a pair of like DK white socks with um, the rest of the yarn remaining from this. So I invested in a future project pattern thing and that's all that I bought myself um, for my birthday. But I also got in the mail a package from Knit Crate. Knit Crate is a monthly subscription thing. Um, you pay X number of dollars a month for a sock or um, double skein delivery each month. And they are offering me a free monthly subscription so that I will share it with you all and tell you what my thoughts are. I think that this is a yarn I would never think to pick for myself, but because I now have it, I feel inspired in a way that I normally am not. I'm also trying to be a sock knitter. I'm not an avid sock knitter. I like to wear hand knit socks and I like to have hand knit socks to knit on, but starting new hand knit sock projects is challenging for me. It's something that I keep putting off. And I think one thing that is neat about Knit Crate is you not only get the yarn, but you get patterns to knit the yarn with. And so I I have it over by my front door right now because I ripped open this package as soon as it arrived and forgot it there because I looked at it briefly and again, avoided the process of casting it on. But one day soon, um, I'm gonna need an easy project to knit. That cable panel is not an easy traveling project once I'm done with the ribbing. The cardigan 
if it's something I'm modifying, it's gonna take a lot of mental power and a lot of note taking. So that's not really an on the go project. I like to have a sock as an on the go project and I hope that I will cast on one very soon. And I know that as soon as I do, I will have that project I can take along with me anywhere because it's lightweight, because it's small, compact and simple. I wish I were a sock knitter and I'm really trying to be, I'm just, I got a lot going on. So this is from Knit Crate. I think it's nice. If you use um, my coupon code, you will save on your first month subscription. So you can use, I think the link I will leave below or the coupon code Taylor E. Owen at checkout to save on your Knit Crate subscription if you are getting that for yourself or a friend. And I got it also a heart-shaped measuring tape too in that package, which was really cute and sweet. That is all the yarn things. I've started spinning um, some Jacob fleece. I actually pulled and set aside um, a sample of it to show you, but then I threw all my things into this giant pile. Okay, here it is. So this is some machine prepared top. Um, is it top if it's woolen? I don't know. It's like semi-drafted wool. I have like an Ikea storage bin full of this. It was given to me by a Ravelry user in my local area. We did a little meetup and swap. And that was like years ago. I've, I've talked about it on here randomly before. But this is a sample spin. I like to try to sample spin close to 50 grams um, of singles twice and then apply it together into a nearly full skein of yarn. Usually, sometimes I get like as little as 60 grams, but I like to be enough that I can make something with it because I just don't like stopping once I start. I just keep going. And a lot of the times it's good enough to make with. So um, it does have a little bit of um, vegetable matter, which at this point now is really dry and easy to pick out. I'll give you a close up so you can check it out. And I can ply a little bit of it back on itself. I don't know if that's an accurate representation of the twist because later on when I do ply it, it won't be on itself. It'll be on another strand plied in the same direction. So has a nice light twist. It's, it's not as, it, with these kind of long wools, you don't want too tight of a twist because it's gonna like kink up into a rope. Last time I spun this fiber, it was the yarn that I used to make my feral shawl, which is a like heavy worsted, almost Aran weight yarn. So I'm trying to spin a much finer yarn with that same fiber and I'm liking the results so far, um, but I have no true sample yet to share. And um, speaking of like samples, these are not samples. These are full size products that I recently purchased and have been using since the start of the spring and summer. And I thought that I might share them with you in case you're looking for a sunscreen or a lip balm because these are my favorites. So we'll just call these like the favorites of spring because it's summer now. Um, summer favorites, I don't know, whatever. These are things that I've been using the last several months that I would probably buy again. Um, and the first is a product that was recommended on Michelle Wong's YouTube channel. If you um, care about beauty, she like does way luxury stuff, like way outside of my means of consumption, but um, she recommended this sunscreen by Dr. Dennis Gross. It's a lightweight wrinkle defense spectrum with SPF 30. Um, and it does work really well. And it does wear nicely over top of other skincare that I use and under makeup. So I highly recommend this. I appreciate mostly the interesting tube. And it doesn't have, it is like rather, opaque but it doesn't have that crazy white cast element to it it's just a nice moisturizing and matte finish without a powdery feel 
cream sunscreen. Um, another favorite, because in Maryland, and I can't believe I'm still wearing this sweater right now, but I don't wanna just like go wardrobe change because um, we're almost at the end of this video. But um, one product too that I highly recommend if you are of fair skin like I am, um, it's like a one color product. I don't know why I'm recommending it still, but let's face it. It's like a Korean brand. There's a lot of fair skin people. Um, Dr. Jart's Beauty Balm in the black label bottle is this like, it's almost gray. It's the, the reason why I like this and I feel compelled to recommend it is that I have this skin tone. I don't know what it is, but nothing works. It's kind of like a green undertone or like a gray undertone where I, I everything is either too pink or too yellow. It's like I'm like the neutral of neutral. And this is the one product I've used that fits that color. It is a sunscreen, it's SPF 30, and it is a like all-in-one skincare and makeup. So it's like a opaque nude color makeup product. This is actually something I found in high school when I was in yearbook class and shopping on Sephora instead of doing any of my assigned work. And I started using it then, and that's when I lived in Florida. And, and like living in Florida, Maryland's heat is wet and hot. It is humid, and almost no matter what, like you're gonna have a sweaty upper lip. And for that reason, I don't like wearing actual makeup. I would rather wear sunscreen that has somewhat of a blurring effect like this. So I don't know, it's lightening. So if I am red from being outside or being in the sun, it kind of neutralize, neutralizes redness without having any real effect on the skin except this general blurring. Um, and I think that's why I'm like turning 36 and I look so young. I think it's because I've been using this since high school and I just can't stop buying one every year. And I'm still using it on like the hottest, grossest days and I, and I like it. Um, it does kind of smear sometimes, like you do have to like either reapply if you really want the sunscreen protection or like simply blot it off so it doesn't look, you know, if you touch your face or something like, it's just so humid, um, it's easy to like, you know, do that. And then the last thing I wanted to share is a total surprise. I do appreciate some particular makeup brands. One of them is Bobbi Brown. Whenever I buy something, I usually get a free gift. And this was one where I never, I don't buy lip products. I know I think in my last video, I was showing you lip products that I bought, but those are like the exception. What I meant to just say was that I buy products for my lips about every 10 years, unless it's a chapstick. And this is a lip gloss from Bobbi Brown that I got in a you know free sample type of promotion. This color is Nougat. And the reason I love this and recommend it is that it's heavy, like a lanolin based product. It might have lanolin in it, I do not know. I don't know anything about this, except that it has a really gentle minty scent and flavor but it's not long wearing so it's like something you pick up on and notice in the experience of application but once it's on you you're no longer tasting or sensing that mint flavor so it's not heavily fragranced and it stays on for a long time and you feel the effect of wearing it for several hours i don't know of any other lip gloss that requires as little reapplication as this one, and it's highly moisturizing for that reason. So I highly recommend this Bobbi Brown lip gloss if you're looking for something like that. And those are just my few favorites as things really heat up around here in Maryland. I wonder what your weather's like. I know it's been exceptionally hot in many, many places, um, except for those weekends where it's exceptionally cool and you're getting snow in June, which is bizarre, but that is, I guess, the planet that we live on and things 
um, are changing. So I need to get out of this wool because I'm burning up, I'm starting to sweat, and I just wanna thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Um, can't wait to make more progress on one of these two projects so that you have, so that I have something to share again in the future soon. Um, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I do hope to come out with project specific videos of each of these things. So I, I just hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you again so much for watching. If you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, um, and TikTok. I think my name is Taylor Knits. I don't, I don't TikTok a lot these days, but I, I need to figure that out again soon. So I hope you have a wonderful day and that you take care. Bye-bye.